Nigel, I think what we're looking for predominantly this time of day, we've, we've got a run out tide, we're probably about an hour or so off the low tide. So at the moment we'd be looking for nice shallow drains for the, uh, the whiting, the brim, those sort of fish. And um, ideally if we found a, a section of beach which was nice and steep, what we would do is probably mark it off from the GPS because it's a nice area to come back to later on when the, uh, when the tide pushes back in. So we've pulled up at a beautiful low tide gutter, it's a nice little drain, we're hoping to target whiting in this instance. So what we're doing is we're going to fish quite light, we're using a fairly small ball sinker in this case, the small running sinker which will run between two swivels. The beauty of running the sinker between two swivels too is we find that having the swivel as the top item in the line uh, will definitely eliminate or reduce line twist. So from there we go from the small swivel down to a bit of plastic tube which really just imitates the worm, it makes that worm look a little bit longer than it really is and it uh, hopefully works as an attractant to draw the whiting in. And then we've got a fairly small hook for the whiting, uh, that's number four Aberdeen and yeah they're a great little hook, really really sharp and I find that they, they do the trick. Beach fishing in Queensland is one of our more popular pastimes and I can fully understand why. There's access to so much available fishing area and that water typically offers us the chance to tangle with a lot of our bread and butter species like your brim, your whiting, your flathead, your dart, they're all there and on top of that there's the added bonus of sometimes your pelagic fare, your, your tailor, your tuna and sometimes your mackerel come in easy reach of the beach angler in Queensland. I'm fishing today with Rob Duncan and some of the guys from Alvey, they're an interesting bunch, I reckon it's about time I went and joined them on the water. Mate, you love chasing your whiting on the beach. I do. We'll kit it out with our worms to do it. We've got a shore based gutter at the moment. How do you like to fish these and what are your favourite ways to go chasing the whiting? Well, if I'm going to just chase the smaller ones, I'll use just the, the inner third of the gutter, yep. the side, because they're just behind the waves there, so you don't get too close to the water. Yep. If you want to get the bigger ones, go for the outer edge of the bank on the back. These are where the large ones lurk. So we've got, at the moment, we've got this gutter which is parallel to the shoreline and there's a bank on the other side That's of it. Correct, so for your yeah. bigger fish, at the back, cast into the sand in the back and then just, just pull your worm it, back into yeah, the gutter. Just let it fall back into the gutter. And if there's any big stuff out there they'll, they'll usually pick it up there. And we're fishing a running rig, about a number three ball sinker, ball so it move, does move around a little bit yes. with the current. Yep. Yeah, don't want, to, don't want to anchor it too much. Fishing um, alvey reels, mono all the way through, whiting and typically whack 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 at a bait yeah. for a while before they grab it so when are you when are you like a lot a lot of people that first start fishing the beach tend to get a bit exuberant, exuberant. what do you when do you I lift? usually wait for them to load the rod up yep you can feel it but the initial bites are like rat -a -tat tats then you'll get the weight of the fish yep gently pull back on the rod it, it's not a bang yep. there's no need for that it's just lift the rod the hook sets itself play the fish out and bring it in at the stretch of the mono do, do the rest well mate you're uh the boys have told me you're pretty good at banging a few good whiting out of these peaches, oh, so why don't you go to work? We'll keep trying. We'll just uh, follow suit, eh? <laughs> we'll keep trying. One of the really practical things about the LV reel is the fact that it is so robust. And by this we mean you can literally put it in the salt water. So if perchance you did get a bit of weed or debris in the rod tip, all you had to do is drop down to your, to your knees or go out knee deep in the, in the salt water, give the reel a nice big turn, give it a flush out and keep on fishing. And look, you know, after a week or two's camping that certainly wouldn't hurt the reel, providing when you got home you gave it a nice rinse in fresh water. And uh, look, do that and your reel will last an absolute lifetime. Could be a dart, I think. Too much further. It's not fighting that hard, so a bit of weight might be another big whiting, I don't know. It's basically in the same place I was catching the whiting, just out off the back bank. So, nice looking fish. I'm fishing today with a light beach fishing outfit for targeting my brim and whiting and dart and fish like that. 
I've matched it up with an Alvi, which is one of the most impressive beach fishing tools I think we've ever invented. It's very hard to break these things. I think the, uh, one of the biggest problems for the Alvi company is that customers don't come back because once they buy an Alvi reel, you pretty much have them for life unless you want two or three, which in my case is pretty much how it's worked. I've got two or three reels, which I think I bought in my teen years. And that was a long, long time ago. Casting with these reels is a case of understanding how the reel works. Now they're a side cast reel, which means by pressing a button on the top, you can turn the reel around, which will then when you cast, will let the line simply spool off. Now, hand position when you're casting on the beach is very important because you want it to be balanced, give you full power on the cast. To do that, I use my bottom hand, my left hand, I'm right-handed, so I'm, my left thumb is gonna control the line. I'm gonna get a nice mount on the reel, a nice comfortable position on the rod, which allows me to grip it properly. I'm then gonna use my dominant hand, my right hand, up the rod till it feels balanced. And in that position, I can then go into my casting process. And then it's all about timing. I just want to release that thumb on the line about the time where the full weight of the sinker is pinning out at a good 45 degree angle. It should be a nice fluent process, lands where you want it to land. One of the real beauties with beach fishing with an Alvi is that they're such a hands-on style reel. They just they give you a lot of the function that you really need to work a bait properly in the surf. You can very easily control line that's going onto the reel. And I think a really important tip when you are fishing with an LV in the surf is to continually keep a finger on the line, both detecting bites, but also once you have a fish, to run and control that line onto the reel. It prevents line twist and it also means that you get a nice balanced line fill onto your reel. And the other nice thing about the Alvi, particularly when you start feeding baits through gutters, and we might talk about that a little bit later, but what you can do at any stage with an Alvi is wind both backwards and forwards really nice and smoothly. Because we're fishing in an area which is always washing in and out, you want that bait to be moving around and being positioned where, ideally where you want it in the gutter. And having a reel which lets you wind so easily both directions is a perfect way to do that. When the, when the, the sea itself starts washing a bait towards you, I can stay in contact with it the whole time. It just lets me feel if a fish suddenly comes onto it. The same token, when that water starts washing back into the gutter, if I want to let my bait drift further back out, it's a case of simply winding backwards and letting that bait move into the prime position that I want it to be. All in all, it's a great way for controlling your bait presentation, which is a key part of catching fish on the beach. As that tide started running into this gutter, the fishing started warming up a bit. There's a few darts starting to come along and play with, play with us, which is a whole lot of fun. They are speedsters. You really use the waves here just to wash them, wash them up to where you want them. They love a well-presented worm bait, which is what we're throwing at them today. It's a case of just picking the right parts of your gutter to throw them into. Now, Rob and I have picked a nice corner of a little gutter at the moment. There's a little bit of a wash pulling water back into that gutter and all we're doing is casting to the corner of it and just letting our baits work back into the gutter and it's pretty much as they come around the corner there's packs of these guys lined up at the moment which is a whole lot of fun. We'll get this guy back. A lot, of, a lot of people take this as a brim, but it's a tar one. Actually, you can tell it by the rounded nose and the golden stripes down along his back there. They're a very nice eating fish if they're looked after. But uh, this one, we'll let him live and get a bit bigger. The sun started setting in the dunes behind us. What that means is the beach can get 
pretty cold pretty quick. Being a lot of us like to get out and fish into the hours of darkness because you do get a lot of good fish on the beach after the sun goes down. It's a good case to have the warm clothes with you so you can rug up and still enjoy your fishing because my experience suggests that when you start getting cold, it starts making it a lot easier to make excuses and go home. Whereas if you like catching fish on the beach and you want some big ones, rug it up and get ready for the dark because that's when the big guys come out to hunt. In the meantime, I have fun with the guys that are biting now. Beach worms are a favoured bait by a lot of anglers that work the beach for good reason. There are a lot of fish coming into the beach like nothing better than a well presented beach worm. Now to rig them today, obviously rigging them on an Aberdeen Mustad number four. And for me, a well presented worm bait is one where I thread it onto the hook and then I use the eye of the hook a bit like a keeper. And what I'll do is actually force the worm over the top of that hook so that it presents nice and straight. And on top of that, we've got a nice little red tubing but we've got a nice straight bait that's going to drift around very seductively with the water flow of the beach and any fish which comes along that could quite easily suck that bait and that hook in so that we've got a good chance of hooking it. Nice and easy, well presented, ready for action. This is one of the tailor rigs I use on the beach. It just consists of a fairly large running sinker. I always put a bead underneath it because it prevents that big sinker bashing the knot and it will cut through the line. Uh, from there I track down to a Lumo bead. I believe that the bigger tailor are nocturnal and by having that bead on your line will certainly uh, attract the fish to your bait. Uh, from there we go down to a pilly rig. It's a standard old West Australian pilchard and we put that on with a three gang. And to, to do this we just simply lay the, uh, lay the hooks across the pilchard like so. We, f just we mark it where the bend in the top hook coincides with the eye and from there we just mark that spot there with our finger push the back hook through and all going well we work our way forward that top hook should line up through the eye like so beautiful and by towing the the bait from the eye it gives it a nice strong towing point lays, lays nice and straight like that and should track through the water beautifully so look all going well we'll toss that in the uh, in the surf and see how we go hopefully we come up with the goods The difference in the flatheads, the spot for the mud flathead or the duskies, uh, contrary to what you normally get on the beach, is a sand tail, a bar tail. And that's all right, this fella will be good to go. It's always nice if you get the chance to fish the beaches with a, a team of your mates. Because what it really does is lets you work a few different options, particularly when you're chasing a few different species where some fish might like a worm bait fish closer to the beach, others might like a flesh bait fish further away, is you can mix and match and fish a bit as a team. So I'm fishing with a, a great bunch of guys and we've really mixed it up how we're going to do it. A couple of us have fished worm baits, pippy baits, and a couple of us have got flesh baits which we put into deeper parts of the gutter and it's been a great way just to see what fish are out there and what, what mood they might be in, what the diet might really comprise of at the moment. And the benefit has been we've seen a range of species. And I know there's an elusive tailor company somewhere. They haven't quite hit our shores at the moment, but there's been a few whispers that they can't be too far away. I've got Cliffy down in the background there. He's been soaking a pilchard and a, a flesh bait for the last hour, thinking that there might be one around. So we'll see, never know. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see 
a whole host of additional videos.